You're listening to the School Leadership Reimagined Podcast, Episode 113, the Summer Rewind Series. How do builders like us make a dramatic difference in the lives of our students in spite of all the obstacles we face? How do you keep your vision for your school from being held hostage by resistant teachers, uncooperative parents, ridiculous district policies, or a lack of time, money, or resources? If you're facing those challenges right now, here is where you'll find the answers, strategies, and actionable tips you need to overcome any obstacle you face. You don't have to wait to make a difference in the lives of the people you serve. You can turn your school into a success story right now with the people and resources you already have. Let's get started. Hey, builders, welcome to another episode of the School Leadership Reimagined podcast. I'm your host, Robin Jackson, and today we are continuing our Summer Rewind series by revisiting episode 19. And in episode 19, I shared with you my team meeting agenda. Now, I wish I could take credit for it, but it's actually something that I stole from Gino Wickman, who is the author of a book called Traction. And he created what he calls the Level 10 Meeting Agenda. And it's for businesses, and we use it here at MindSteps. It has been so effective that I modified it to make it work for schools. And so this is one of the secret weapons of many of my clients. And it's one of the reasons why they're able to get so much done. You see, most of our meetings are pretty unproductive. We sit around, we we talk about things, we rehearse problems over and over again, but we never solve those problems. They're boring, they're excruciating. And this meeting agenda is a true game changer. My clients who use this talk to me all the time about how it's made such a difference in terms of their ability to get things done. And it really is the secret behind why so many builders are able to execute. You know, I was just talking to some folks the other day and they were talking about some changes that they wanted to make. And they said, yeah, but it's going to take us four or five years to get it done. And I said, it will if you choose to use leadership strategies. But if you approach this problem like a builder, you can see dramatic changes in the next year. It won't take you five years to start seeing growth. You'll see it within the next year. And one of the reasons is because builders are more efficient around the kinds of meetings that they host. So when you use this team meeting agenda, it can help you take action every single week towards your goals and solve your most pressing problems every single week before they get out of hand. And it can also help your team get focused on the right things rather than getting distracted by the wrong things. And this is my favorite part. It helps everybody on your team remain accountable to doing the work that they need to be doing to move your school towards your vision. And it helps them to be accountable without you having to go run behind them and and chase and check and correct the work that they're doing. So I want you to take notes on this episode and, and really pay attention because I'm telling you, if you start to use this meeting agenda for your meetings this year and you create a meeting rhythm where you're meeting regularly around your vision, mission and core values and the goals that you have for the year, it, this is going to be a game changer. So I hope you enjoy the episode and we'll see you next time with another Rewind. Hey, builders, welcome to episode 19 of the School Leadership Reimagined podcast. I'm your host, Robin Jackson, and today I'm going to do something special for you. I'm going to let you steal my team meeting agenda. This is the exact agenda I use with my own team during our weekly meetings, and it's the agenda I teach to my clients to help them have meetings that are more efficient and that help everyone be more accountable. Okay, tell me something. How many of you love going to meetings? Go ahead. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you love to sit in a meeting. Mm, That's what I thought. I didn't think so. That's because most meetings are quite frankly a waste of time. We don't mean to waste people's time when we have a meeting. We actually have good intentions, things that we need to discuss, items that we need to address, issues that need resolving. So why is it that most meetings are such a waste of time. Why is it that most meetings we sit around and we blah, 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 but we don't actually solve anything? Or even if we commit to doing something when we come to the next meeting and we ask, okay, is this done? Is that done? Is that done? Nothing's done. 
Well, it's because although we sit there and we discuss things, very rarely do we actually resolve anything or make true commitments to to doing the work after the meeting is over. So in other words, most meetings don't result in any kind of action. So that's why today I want to share with you a meeting agenda that I use to help my team and I take action. And it also has the added benefit of helping keep everybody at the meeting accountable to what they commit to doing in the meeting so that everybody has to take action and I don't have to yell at them to get it done. And this is also the agenda that I share with my clients. So when my clients are working on really moving their schools forward, one of the things that we often find is that they have really ineffective and inefficient meetings. And this agenda, we put this into place and all of a sudden they're getting stuff done week after week after week, just moving along because they have a meeting agenda like the one that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So this is an agenda that you can use for your weekly leadership team meetings, but it also works really, really well for teacher team meetings. In fact, it's the best meeting format that I've ever seen for helping you identify and talk about what's really important and more importantly, take action on it once the meeting's over. So first, I should tell you that I didn't make up this agenda format myself. I actually stole it from a guy named Gino Wickman, who's the author of a book called Traction. And I stole it a few years ago. And I'm I'm telling you this so that you won't feel bad about stealing the agenda from me because, after all, I stole it from Gino. Okay, anyway... I've modified it slightly to make it work in a school situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the parts of the agenda and explain what they are and and why they work. And I'll tell you also how to adjust it for if you're doing it with your leadership team or if you're doing it with a teacher team. And then at the end of the episode, I'm going to give you a link so that you can download the entire agenda and use it at your next team meeting. Deal? Okay, good deal. All right. Now, the agenda starts with something called a segue. And this is really a chance to help everybody, you know, really shift their focus from whatever they were thinking about before the meeting to what they need to be thinking about at the meeting. So rather than, you know, doing the normal thing where you just do a few minutes of idle chit chat, what you do instead is you have everybody go around the circle and they share a win that they had since the last meeting. Now, this does a couple of things. First, it helps everybody kind of, you know, ease into the meeting. And second, it gets everybody thinking about and focusing how they're individually progressing towards your team goals. So they 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 start really focusing on, you know, what have I been doing in the last couple of weeks and where are the wins? And then third, and I think this is the most important part, it starts the meeting off on the right foot. It starts the meeting off by by celebrating kind of what you've done prior. Because remember, in the meeting, you're going to be tackling some really heavy stuff. So you know, you don't want to be so focused on that that you don't take a moment and stop and think about the wins. I mean, we never do that. We never spend time thinking about wins. And so by starting the meeting, focusing on wins before you start attacking challenges, it's everybody in the right frame of mind. And you'd be surprised at how hard it is for people to come up with a good win for each meeting. I mean, you start asking people like, oh, I don't know what it was my win. But it's really important that you do it because having them go back and review the week and find the win gets them in the right frame of mind. So don't skip this part. This is this part of the meeting should take, you know, five minutes, no more than about five minutes. Okay, so next you're going to spend the next five minutes going over your team scorecard. And your team scorecard is where you review the the five to, you know, at the most 15 of the most important numbers in your school to determine whether you're on track. So for instance, your SIP plan this year may be about increasing student attendance. So each week you need to review your attendance numbers or perhaps you are focusing on reading proficiency this year. So you need to track how students are making progress at each grade level or, you know, maybe you're focusing on student suspension. So each week you need to review the suspension number. And the point is that each week you need to be looking at about, you know, five to no more than 15 key numbers that tell you how you're progressing towards your goal. So One of the things we're going to be doing at Builders Lab 19 is we're going to be talking to you about what numbers you should be tracking and helping you figure it out. It's not like a set of, you know, it's not like a set group of numbers. We're going to help you figure out 
what your numbers should be. And then once you have them, you're going to be, you know, looking at those numbers every single time that you meet. And you're not just going to be looking at lagging numbers, you know, numbers that have already happened where you don't have a chance to to do anything about them. You want to try to find a few leading indicators that let you know early on whether you are making progress towards your goals or not, so that you have time to to do something to intervene to impact those numbers and thus, you know, impact your school goals. Now, during the meeting, all you're going to do is you're just going through the numbers and that's it. You're not going to discuss the numbers. You're just going to say, okay, how are we doing with suspensions this week? What's the number? What was last week's number? Are we on track? And if a number indicates that you're on track, great, you're on track. And any number that indicates an area where you're not on track, well, you're going to put that item on your issues list. And I'll tell you what the issues list in a little bit, but you're not going to discuss the numbers. This is not the time to do that. You're just simply indicating, are you on track? Are you not on track? That's five minutes. So after you do that quick review of the numbers, you're going to do a quick review of any key initiatives you're working on. So you're going to go around the room and everybody's going to briefly report on whether the initiative that they are in charge of is either on track or off track. Again, no discussion. So if initiative is on track, and by on track, I mean that the owner feels like he or she is going to be able to accomplish it by the end of the quarter, then you just move to the next initiative. But if the initiative is off track, again, it goes on the issues list. And this part of the meeting should take no longer than 10 minutes, five minutes. If you want to try to get to five minutes, but if you can't, no longer than 10 minutes. You just go around the room. Okay, where are we on this initiative? We're on track. Okay, great. Uh, Not on track. So let's put on the issues list and we can talk about it later. So after the review, the next step is to briefly go over any kind of student teacher headlines. And this is where you and your team can briefly share any news for the week that has to do with your teachers or with your, if you're a group of teachers, with your students. So for example, somebody might say, you know, um, Mrs. Flintstone got engaged or um, Bart Simpson's parents are getting a divorce. So we need to keep an eye out for him. Or, you know, um, Betty Rubble is about to go out on maternity leave. And, you know, if, if this is if it's good news, well, great, we're going to celebrate. But if it's bad news, it's either an FYI or if it's serious enough and it's going to impact the initiatives that you're working on, you may need to add it to your issues list. But you're just going to go through quick any news this week. What are the headlines? What are the things we need to be aware of? Um, and they could be about students. They could be about teachers. They could also be about, you know, listen, the fifth grade team is going on a field trip this week. So don't forget about that. Whatever it's, you know, whatever those that news is, you're just going to quickly just share those headlines. And again, this part of the meeting should take five minutes or so. Okay, so next is the to-do list. And this is where you're going to review all the to-dos from last week. Now, this is really important because this is where the accountability starts coming in. So you're just going to quickly go through all of the items, the action items that came out of last meeting. And remember, when you create an action item, you should have who will do what by when. And so you're quickly going to go through that list and you're just going to say, okay, someone has said it's going to, they're going to do a scrub of the data and try to drill down um, and figure out the key questions that kids missed on the last benchmark test. Where are we with that? Bob, that was yours. Is it done? And Bob's going to say, yep, done, got it here. Or nope, didn't get a chance to get to it. So if it's done, you just strike it from the list. And if it's undone, you leave it on the list. Now here's the caveat. No to do should remain on the list for more than two weeks. So this is a great way to track everything and to hold everybody accountable for getting their to do's done. Because if your to do is sitting on the list for, you know, the first week and then people see it on the list again, they know you didn't do your job. It's there for everybody to see. And if a to do is on the list for more than two weeks straight, you know, two weeks in a row, then it would go on the issues list because it's further discussion that's needing. So all you're going to do right now is you're going to, you know, it's a quick way to go through. Bob, did you get it done? Nope. Okay, we'll leave it on the list when you need it done by next week. Okay, gotcha. Or Bob, did you get it done? Nope. Um, but because I ran into an issue. Does that need to go on the issues list? Yeah, I think it does. We put it on the issues list. Bob, did you get it done? Yep. Great job, Bob. Let's go into the next person. That's all you're doing for this part of the meeting. And again, it should take no longer than five minutes. Okay, so now we're going to get to the heart of the meeting and this, the issues list. And this is where you're going to spend the bulk of your meeting time. So at least, you know, 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes at the minimum but preferably an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, you know, for those of you who have more time where you can have a 90 minute meeting. And so what you've done is you've kept this running list of issues that you need to discuss. And now it's time to go through the list together and to prioritize your issues to figure out what are your top three. 
So again, in Builders Lab, when we're, we're going to go through this in Builders Lab, I'm going to give you a matrix that helps you really easily prioritize your issues so that you're working on the right issues at the right time. And you can, so that's kind of what you want to do. This is really, really important because you really want to make sure that you're focusing on the right issues and you're getting them resolved. So what you're going to do is you're going to think about what issue is most important, most urgent, and then you're going to try to figure out which ones you need to tackle first. And once you have your top three issues, Go to work on issue number one, the most important, the most urgent issue that you have. That's the one you're going to work on. And you're working on it until it's resolved. You're not going to discuss it and it's on the issues list next week. Once you take an issue off the issues list and make it a matter of discussion, you're going to keep discussing it and working on it until it's resolved. And the idea of the discussion is we want to go through the issue and we want to find a way to solve it. And then you're going to, as you're resolving it, you're going to be creating a, an, a plan of attack. And so any plan of attack that you generate from that discussion, that becomes your to-do list and you will assign each action item an owner and that'll be a part of the to-do list to get done during that week. Now, you may spend the meeting just tackling issue number one and you never get to the other issues and that's okay because you know, you're still going to get at least one, your most important issue resolved, and you can't adjourn the meeting until you've resolved the issue. And once you resolve the first issue, if there's time, then you can move on to the next issue and so on until the meeting is over. Now, why is this so important? Well, Most meetings are a lot of talk. They don't resolve anything. But by prioritizing your issues and then working on one issue at a time until it's resolved, you can actually come out of every meeting with your top issue resolved, settled, done. Now, in order to get your issue resolved, you can't just, you know, sit around and discuss it and, you know, and have conversations about it. You actually need to follow a specific protocol. And it's called the IDS, which stands for Identify, Discuss, and Solve. Pretty simple, right? So here's how it works. First, you need to identify the real issue. And that means that you're going to spend the first part of your discussion actually trying to get to the root of the problem. And that's really important. I find that so many people I work with They think they've gotten to the root cause and they've really just named another symptom. And so I've kind of developed this process to help people get to the root cause of a problem. I'm going to be sharing it at Builders Lab. But basically, you're going to go through and you're going to list all the things that could be the root cause and you just keep whittling it down until you get to the root cause. And I know there are a lot of root cause analysis worksheets out there, but I've seen people kind of really screw those up. You know, they fill in the blanks, but they never get to the root cause. So you got to make sure that you're really getting to the root of the problem, because that way you can make sure you're solving the right problem. I mean, I see so many teams kind of jumping to a solution before they truly understand the problem. And then they wonder why their solutions don't work. And it's because they're actually solving the wrong problem. So I want you to spend some time here, really dig down and make sure that everybody agrees on the problem and understands the real issue that's involved in the problem and that you've gotten to the root cause. And so that discussion may take some time, but it's a very purposeful discussion because you're not just going around and around and around and, you know, kind of naming out issues. You're saying, okay, that may be a symptom of it, but is that the root cause? And you're keeping the discussion focused until you get to the root cause. And then once you've determined the root of the problem, You can discuss it. You can talk about that root cause a little bit more, talk about how it's impacting things, talk about possible solutions. And then finally, you want to determine what solution you're going to pursue to solve the problem. And that way, you walk out of your meeting with a plan of action that's really designed to actually resolve the issue. I mean, imagine that, leaving a meeting with a problem resolved. So... After you do all of that, and that's going to be the bulk of your meeting, there's actually, you know, one more step to your meeting agenda, and that's to go through the to-do list and kind of recap the to-dos to make sure that every single action item has been captured on that list. Every single action item has an owner so that that person is in charge. Now, remember, an owner doesn't mean that I have to do it. The owner means that I have to make sure it gets done. There's somebody in charge of of following through with that action item. And there may be other people involved, but there has to be one person whose responsibility is to make sure the action item gets done. So once you do that, you're going to figure out, okay, this is the action item. This is the owner. And then you have to figure out, when it's going to get done. So by the time you're done, you've worked on your most pressing issues and you've identified exactly how you're going to solve them. And then you go through the list of action items one more time and just make sure that each action item has a due date and a person responsible. So basically you're deciding who's going to do what by when for every single action item. And once you've decided what actions you're going to take, 
Then you discuss whether there are any messages that need to be communicated to other stakeholders based on, you know, the decisions that you made in the meeting. You don't want to make a decision in the meeting and then rumors get out or, you know, the people who are going to be impacted never hear about that decision because they weren't in a meeting. So, you know, for instance, you might have decided like, you know, I don't know, like you, you're going to, you're going to, one of the things you're going to do is you're going to change the, the bell schedule next Friday. Well, you need to let teachers know that, or maybe you decide that you're going to adjust your attendance procedures to make processing tardy students, you know, kind of more streamlined. So teachers need to do handle tardies differently. Well, again, you need to let the teachers know, but you also need to let the students and parents know. So you need to decide how you're going to communicate that, who's going to be in charge of it, so that when you leave the meeting, there's one message that comes out of the meeting. So who's going to be in charge of communicating? What's the message going to be? And how are you going to deliver that message? That goes on your list of action items. Okay, so now after you've done all of that, you're ready to adjourn the meeting. The f- one thing that I think it's kind of cool that you can do, and we don't do it honestly at the end of every meeting, but I think we should, and that you should be doing that, especially at first, is that you really need to rate the meeting at the end of the meeting on a scale of one to 10. Um, you know, one being this was like worse than death and 10 being, wow, can we go another 90 minutes? This is an amazing meeting. And the goal should be that the average score should be at eight or better for each meeting. So everybody's going to rate the meeting individually, and then you collect it and you're going to look for an average score of at least eight. And if you score lower than that, then you need to ask people for suggestions on how you can improve things next time. If you've got an eight or better, then you, you're pretty good. So that's it. That's the what I call the accountable weekly meeting agenda. So let me give you a couple of examples of how you can use this meeting agenda. So first, let's say that, you know, this, let's look at a grade level team meeting and how they might be able to use it. And so they use their team meeting to discuss kids, to discuss, you know, things that they're working on in their different grades. You know, this is maybe at a middle school, for instance. Well, you could use this meeting agenda to help you keep track of students and to make sure that you're working towards your team goals. So you would start the meeting with your individual wins for the week. You know, like, did you plan an amazing lesson? Well, then you could brag about it. Or were you able to finally get through to a student? Well, celebrate that. And everybody's going to go around and share at least one personal win that they've had for the week. And then you quickly go through your team scorecard and look at the benchmark testing data, as well as the homework completion data and the attendance data for the week. And you see that your homework completion number is going down. So you add homework completion to the issues list. And maybe you notice that students aren't hitting some of the math benchmarks. So Maybe you want to add that to the issues list as well. Okay, so next you go through the headlines. You quickly share a few student highlights, make any announcements, share that two teachers are going to be out on Friday, so you need to check in with their subs in case they need support, or you might want to raise some red flags about any students who, are, who aren't doing well and if they're in danger. And if it's really an issue, then you want to add those students' names to your issues list as well. And then after that, you're going to go through your to-dos from the prior meeting and check them off. And if somebody didn't complete their to-do list for the prior week, you add them back to the list for the coming week, check in, make sure, you know, there's not any kind of bigger issue brewing there, and then you move on. Okay, so then you're going to dive into the meat of the meeting, which is your issues list. And on your list, maybe you've got like, you know, several students who are showing some behavior issues and are starting to fail their classes. You've got a team field trip coming up in three weeks. You've got upcoming benchmark testing. You've got a rise in student tardies, especially in the afternoon after lunch. So after some discussion, you decide that the behavior issues are the most urgent and most important because if you can nip those in the bud early and get those students back on track, then you can resolve a lot of other bigger problems, you know, down the line. And so after that, you decide, okay, that's our first priority. So maybe the next we're going to talk about the upcoming benchmark assessments And then um, you look and say, well, you know, based on the to-do list, the field trip preparations are kind of under control. So it's really nothing urgent to discuss with that. So you can skip it for that meeting. And the tardies are becoming an issue. So if you have time, you're going to discuss those as well. And if not, you'll continue to monitor them as a group and stay on the issue and it'll stay on the issues list. And maybe you'll talk about it at the next meeting. Okay, so. Then you decide you're going to tackle the behavior issues first. So you start by discussing what you as a team are seeing with students and you look for the root cause and you're going to ask questions like, is it just a few students or are these issues more pervasive? And so maybe after some discussion, you realize that the behavior issues are really kind of isolated to just a few students. And then you dig some more. Why are just those students having behavior issues? And you decide as a team that 
Well, maybe what you're going to do as a first step is you need to contact their parents and then adjust their schedules so that these students are not in the same classes because you really feel like the root cause is this, just the wrong combination of students. So you're going to have the guidance counselor follow up with the kids as well. So and if that doesn't work, you'll get to the administration involved. So, you know, one of you takes the lead on contacting parents and volunteers to you know, potentially scheduling a parent conference and putting it on the team Google calendar. And another team member says, okay, well, I'll um, contact the guidance counselor and have her follow up with students. And then a third team member volunteers to figure out some suggested schedule changes and work with the guidance office to get the students new schedules. And all of that will go in the to-do list. Who's going to do what by when? Okay, so you check the clock and you realize you still have about maybe, um, you know, 15 minutes left. So you decide, let's tackle the next issue in the issue list, which is the tardies. So as a team, you look at the tardy data and try to get to the root cause. And you just determine that most of the tardies are happening as students are returning from lunch or PE. So after a bit of brainstorming, you decide that you'll implement a different procedure for the lunchroom where teachers are going to walk their students back to their next class. And the team leader decides, okay, well, they volunteer. I'll speak with the PE teacher, find out why students may be coming to class tardy, and I'll report back on the next meeting. All that goes on the to-do list. Okay, so by this time, you only have a few minutes left. So you reviewed the to-dos. You make sure that each one has an owner and a deadline. Then you quickly go around the room and rate the meeting. And the average group rating is a nine. So you're good to go and you adjourn. So that's kind of an example of how you might use the same agenda if you're doing a grade level team meeting rather than just doing a, a leadership meeting. But regardless of how you use this agenda, every week you're going to go through the same routine. And because your agenda becomes your minutes, you have this running record of your team commitments, the issues you're tackling, and who's pulling their weight and who's slacking on their commitments. So if you're a leadership team, the meeting agenda looks very similar to what I just described. You know, your issues may be a little different, but you're going to follow the same agenda. You're going to tackle your most important issues first, and you're going to resolve at least one major issue per meeting. And if you are a grade level team, again, you're going to use the same kind of format every single week. And what's nice if you're an administrator, if you're, if you get your grade level teams on this meeting agenda, then you can monitor what's going on in the team meetings, even if you're not sitting in the team meetings. And if you see somebody who's consistently, you know, showing up on the to-do list and their stuff is not done week after week after week, you can follow up and you have a running record that you can use to talk to them about it with. So it becomes this beautiful way to help people be accountable without, you know, using some sort of draconian method to hold people accountable. So I'm telling you, this is a very powerful way to keep your entire team focused on what matters most and to make sure that you're actually being productive and accountable in your team meetings. So let me run through that kind of agenda one more time so you have it. And um, so you're going to start with a segue where you share team wins for the week. And then you go to the review of your team's scorecard to see how you're progressing towards your goals. And any number that's off track goes in your issues list. That's about five minutes. And then next, you're going to go through any headlines where you brief the team on what's happening with students or teachers in your building. Again, no more than five minutes. After that, you're going to go through the to-do list from the prior week, and you're going to check off everything that's done. And anything that's still sitting on the to-do list for more than two weeks goes on the issues list. Again, you know, two to five minutes. Then next, you're going to go through your issues list and you're going to prioritize your issues and you're going to focus on the most important or urgent first. And then you're going to go through one issue at a time and work through that issue until it's resolved. And then any action item that you that comes out of that discussion goes on the to do list and you're going to make sure that you're going to include who's going to do what by when. And you're going to go through as many issues as time allows. And then at the end of the meeting, you're going to review the to do list. One more time, make sure everybody's clear. You're going to develop a communication plan in case anything needs to be communicated out. And then you're going to rate the meeting. So that's it. That's my team meeting agenda. Now, I know it doesn't seem very fancy or or super special or anything like that. But let me tell you something. This is the best team meeting agenda I've ever seen for helping teams get stuff done. You want to know my favorite part of the agenda is I love that it holds everybody accountable for their part in a way that's that's not threatening or, or, you know, kind of in your face. Do your job. It's it's there and it's kind of obvious. And I've seen people who get really embarrassed because they keep showing up on the to do list as not having their stuff done and they start to just step up. So. 
you know, the to-do list is really going to be a part of every meeting agenda. And that means if I don't get my part done before the meeting, it's part of the record and everybody can see it. So as a team leader, you don't have to call anybody out about not getting their stuff done because it's right there for everybody to see. And if I'm repeatedly not getting my part done, then that's also part of the record. So it's kind of genius. Now, if you listen this far, I hope you can see why I am just so geeked about this agenda format. I mean, here's the thing. A lot of people are meeting weekly anyway, but how much are you actually accomplishing in those meetings? I mean, how much time are you spending on the really important stuff? And after the meeting's over, how much of that discussion actually turns into real action that moves you closer and closer to your goals? This is one of the hidden obstacles that I see a lot of people facing. When you want to know why aren't you getting stuff done, a lot of times it's something as simple as a team meeting agenda. You know, if you're not getting stuff done, if you are stuck and you can't seem to get people moving, if if all you do is sit around and talk about stuff, but you never actually have any action, then I strongly encourage you to change your meeting agenda to one that gets everybody on your team focused on your goals and helps them take action every single week towards your goals. It also helps you resolve your most important issues every single week. Every week you are walking out of that meeting and something, the thing that is the most important thing is getting done. And then my favorite part, it helps everybody stay accountable to the team for doing their part towards reaching your goals. So again, not fancy, not sexy, but it sure as heck is effective. Again, if you are not getting stuff accomplished, I urge you, steal my team meeting agenda, try it out, and then let me know how it works. Okay, so before I go, I want to remind you about today's sponsor, which is Builders Lab 2019. Right now, we're doing an early bird special where you can save $100 off of the ticket price up until October 17th, 2018. So just go to mindstepsinc.com slash builders dash lab, B-U-I-L-D-E-R-S dash L-A-B. So mindstepsync.com slash builders lab, and you can learn more about it. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And remember, every week we have show notes and that's where you can get any free downloads or find out all the resources, links to all the resources that I mentioned in the podcast. And this week, if you go to the show notes, that's where you can download a copy of my team meeting agenda. And you can find that at schoolleadershipreimagined.com slash episode 19. That's schoolleadershipreimagined.com slash episode 19. Hey, if you're ready to get started being a builder right away, then I want to invite you to join us at Buildership University. It's our exclusive online community for builders just like you, where you'll be able to get the exact training that you need to turn your school into a success story right now with the people and resources you already have. Inside, you'll find our best online courses, live trainings with me, tons of resources, templates and exemplars, and monthly live office hours with me where you can ask me anything and get my help on whatever challenge you're facing right now. If you're tired of hitting obstacle after obstacle and you're sick of tiny little incremental gains each year, if you're ready to make a dramatic difference in your school right now, then you need to join Buildership University. Just go to buildershipuniversity.com and get started writing your school success story today. 